many gardeners are interested in growing their fruits and vegetables organically, or at least minimizing applications of harmful pesticides to their gardens? Now, with insect control, many of us are more familiar with organic methods of control than we are with disease management. But a lot of these management techniques are very similar. As part of an integrated pest management, we have several strategies that we can use to minimize disease. And these include starting with a disease resistant plant material. We can also practice good sanitation and in our vegetable garden, rotate our crops to minimize disease. Now, these practices are preventative measures and they don't always prevent an outbreak from occurring. Organic growers don't have the same chemicals to turn to when a disease does break out. But there are a few products that we can use. And the first group of these are biopesticides. And they're named biopesticide because they're derived from natural materials such as animals, plants, bacteria, and even certain minerals. Now a certain um, group from bacteria that we're familiar with is Bt or Bacillus thuringiensis and this is a microbial biopesticide because it comes from a microbe. Um, now of course Bt we use against insect pests but there's the related Bacillus subtilis which can be used against fungal pathogens. And both of these are active against a very narrow host range and they also tend to break down more quickly in the environment and these characteristics make our biopesticides comparatively safer because they're less persistent and they don't have as broad of an effect on non-target pests. Now in addition to our biopesticides, organic growers can also use certain metals, uh, specifically sulfur and copper. And sulfur is probably the oldest known fungicide. It's been used for over 2,000 years. Sulfur is active against fungal pathogens such as powdery and downy mildew, rusts, and also our uh, rose black spot. Now, the, the way that this works is it prevents those fungus spores from germinating. And so it needs to be applied before we see a disease. So it's used more as a preventative measure. And it can sometimes be difficult to tell when do we want to make these applications. A lot of times I look at how my plants grew last year. If I had a particularly difficult disease problem, I might go ahead and apply sulfur as a preventative measure. Now sulfur can be harmful to certain plants, especially raspberries, apricots, gooseberries, and cucurbits. So you want to make sure that you read the label and know that it's safe to use on that plant. Another metal that's been used for a very long time is copper. And copper comes in a number of formulations, and one that we might all be very familiar with is the Bordeaux mixture. But regardless of formulation, copper pesticides work well against both fungal diseases and also bacteria like leaf spots and fire blight. And so this is the difference uh, in use between copper and sulfur. Again though, copper can be phytotoxic, which means it can kill actively growing plant material. So you want to read that label and be sure to apply it at the proper time and rate, and also make sure it's safe for the plant that we want to treat. Now if we look at all these products, they're all packaged very similarly to conventional pesticides that we're accustomed to using. And we also apply them in a similar manner. And this makes them a little bit more accessible to gardeners and easy for us to adopt in our gardens.